Okay, while it's loading, uh, uh, I'm uh, one of the founders of the LibreOffice project. Okay. Okay, so I'm one of the founders of the LibreOffice project. I'm Italian, as my first name uh, says, uh, although there are more uh, Italos in Brazil than in Italy, uh, which is funny, but this is the reality. Um, I will try to explain what we are doing at LibreOffice uh, to improve the sustainability of the project, because the project is uh, rather large. Uh, Office Suite are uh, uh, one of the most uh, widely available software, is basically on every desktop. Uh, there has been a move uh, uh, to the cloud, uh, although there is still a lot on the desktop. And uh, the majority of users at the moment uh, are uh, using uh, two products and not just one uh, as in the past. Uh, in the past, it was clear that you had one uh, software to produce all your documents. Today, uh, you probably have uh, one in the cloud and one on, your, on uh, the desktop, uh, creating large uh, documents on the cloud uh, is not as easy or as possible as on the desktop, especially uh, if you talk about uh, documents which are over 50 page long, which uh, are uh, uh, is a large number, or a, a presentation of over 20 slides. It's uh, not always easy to manage them. Uh, the, the life cycle of Office Suite uh, has been um, uh, questions for uh, uh, years, but the reality is that they're still there. Uh, and uh, two of the largest uh, software companies in the world, uh, Microsoft and Google, are investing quite a lot of money on the development of these products. Uh, if we look at the market uh, today, we are uh, in at the market uh, of around $28 billion, billion, not million, billion dollars. And uh, the reason uh, you, it's easy to understand uh, uh, why companies um, are trying to protect uh, their share of the market uh, uh, with uh, uh, not completely ethical practices uh, by using uh, a lock-in strategy, which is based on different, uh, different components, uh, but mostly on the document format. Uh, the growth is stable. Uh, as you see, we had uh, a decrease during the pandemics. Although the reality is that the usage of this software increased, but of course purchases decreased, uh, while uh, now the growth is around 5% per year. If we look at the uh, usage of this software, these data are from September 2017. Uh, they have not been updated uh, formally, but unfortunately, uh, uh, let's say that informally the numbers are more or less the same. So let's say that open source uh, software in this area has around 15 to 17 percent of the market. If you think that the market is uh, 28 billion dollars, uh, it's easy to do the mathematics. Uh, the reality is that uh, we have uh, more users than uh, the revenue associated with those users. The number of uh, enterprises, especially enterprises, that use uh, uh, free open source uh, office suite without uh, giving back anything are the majority. Unfortunately, they are the majority. We, uh, as LibreOffice, uh, at the moment, we get the more or less the same amount of money from individual users and from corporations. And you understand that this is completely unbalanced in terms of uh, uh, 
the importance that corporation give to the software. Uh, they use uh, the software strategically. There are governments that are using the software strategically. They are not paying a single cent to the project. We don't want, of course, the same amount of money of proprietary software. But uh, to maintain the software, to keep it competitive, uh, we would need more attention, let's call it attention, from enterprises than uh, we actually get. Uh, and uh, this is, uh, I'm showing you just because uh, there are some uh, funny answers from users. Uh, the uh, Microsoft Office is uh, the yellow and the uh, orange, and you can see they are uh, uh, up in the judgment apart from the cost. And uh, what is funny is that they are first and second for customer support. Has anyone ever tried to get customer support from Microsoft uh, from uh, about Office? They are uh, the first and second for reliability. Uh, the, re the reliability of Office 365 is historical, has never been Office 365 so, so far, has always been Office 360, 359, because it was out for six, seven, eight days a year uh, about the reliability. They should call it for what it is. 365 means 365 days. So last year it was 359. So they should recall or at least correct the name uh, at the end of the year because people are paying for it. Uh, but apart from the jokes, uh, the, li the LibreOffice project was born with a rather clear uh, model. There is a foundation that is owning uh, the, uh, the, the not the property of the code, but it's uh, coordinating the development. There are companies, uh, there are individuals in the community, volunteers, and there are companies in the community, in the, the ecosystem. The development is done by, develop, by, of course, developers. Some of them are volunteers. Some of them are paid by companies. Uh, companies, of course, serve those enterprises that are willing to, uh, to support the LibreOffice, either by paying developers, either by buying uh, an, a long-term supported version of the software, either by solving bugs or making uh, other improvements or uh, developing new features. Um, TDF uh, is a charity, is uh, based in Germany, but could, ba could be based in any, any country in, of the world, uh, and uh, as such cannot sell any kind of software. So TDF, the software provided by the Document Foundation will, al will always be free. We uh, try as much as we can to have the entire uh, value chain based on uh, uh, open source uh, 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 licenses. We don't have uh, uh, dual, at the moment, we don't have dual core uh, solutions. Uh, of course, the company that uh, pay and the ecosystem companies, they pay for support development. They don't pay the code. They pay for the value added associated with the code. Which are the stakeholders? Community members, they have a very high involvement uh, and uh, they give a project a lot of value. And users, they don't have a lot of involvement because the product is free. And uh, they don't give the product a lot of value because Office Suite are a commodity. Uh, today, if you buy a PC, you usually find a, a trial version of Office, which tells you that that product is a commodity in any case. And uh, so uh, one of the challenges is to uh, create more uh, involvement in of the users in the project. Uh, the problem of open source sustainability 
especially for large product uh, project, uh, but some of the issues we had in the, the last few years are not always involved, uh, not always related to large product uh, projects. Uh, we we have always had some uh, some uh, uh, solutions or some proposed solutions. The in 2014, uh, the art bleed bug uh, was uh, uh, probably the episode that uh, turned the, the the made people aware that you have to invest in open source, especially if it's a strategic software. Uh, in 2016, Nadia Ekbal uh, is an, uh, a researcher, published a very long uh, paper, Roads and Bridges. Uh, it's it's available on the internet. It was sponsored by the Ford Foundation. If you have not uh, heard about it, uh, uh, download it and uh, and read it. It's quite a long, long paper, but it's very interesting because it's a is a <coughs> thorough analysis of the situation. In 2019, uh, Dries Buitert, who is the the man behind. Uh, uh, Drupal and Akuya uh, publish a, a very interesting, a very long, uh, and uh, um, I think uh, very much thought about blog post uh, is balancing makers and takers to scale and sustain open source. I will use uh, some of these uh, uh, comments because I think they are uh, extremely interesting. Uh, so the Basically, the, the first stage is uh, that uh, the, the roads, uh, um, this is a summary and in, is an image that summarizes the, 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 the idea. Uh, if, you, if you take roads, the roads are created by volunteers. So you, you, you go from point A to point B and you create the road. Of course, if there is a meaning, the road is improved by the business because there is money behind it. If you think in the Middle Age in Europe, to go from point A to point B, you had to pay uh, taxes. And that was, was used to maintain the roads to go from point A to point B. And then uh, they become a, a, com a commodity for the community and the state owns the road. So the community owns the road through the state because they are an advantage for everyone. This is uh, uh, one idea of uh, how the project can be managed. But the problem is uh, that, of course, uh, open source communities are not always willing to uh, stick to a strict code of uh, behavior uh, to, to make uh, the software easier to sustain. Uh, volunteers uh, want to develop what they want to develop, not what the, it is, makes sense to be developed or makes economical uh, sense to be developed. And of course, uh, uh, this uh, uh, is uh, what makes open source unique on one, uh, on one side, but makes also uh, a challenge maintaining the sustainability of the of projects. So, uh, being LibreOffice a large project, the the code is seven million lines of uh, code, uh, and uh, the number of users that we have uh, uh, is estimated between one hundred and two hundred millions. We have uh, around one million download per week. And uh, of course, uh, this makes the project quite large, not easy to maintain. At the moment, we provide versions for Windows, for Intel and ARM processors, for Macintosh, for uh, Intel and uh, Apple processors, for Linux. Uh, we have uh, versions for mobiles and for the cloud from ecosystem companies. So the number of um, uh, versions that have to be released is, is uh, quite significant. We provide a new release almost every month and uh, a major release every six months. So the challenge of maintaining the 
project is not trivial. And uh, the last idea of Greece, uh, which is uh, what I think uh, is uh, extremely interesting, is the dividing users uh, between or people associated to open source between makers and takers. So makers are the people that actually make the software develop the software, but not only develop the software. For instance, for LibreOffice, uh, you can imagine uh, how big uh, is the localization effort. LibreOffice is available in 120 languages. Uh, is the software available in most languages uh, in, uh, in the world more than any other software? There are other 30 languages uh, in the process. So uh, we have uh, around uh, 5,500 5, 5, localizers uh, on a global basis. And it's not, of course, it's not easy. Uh, languages, there are different needs. Uh, we, uh, in, in Asia, you, you have a lot of uh, languages which are written uh, right to left and uh, top to down, which is completely different from uh, our languages that are written left to right and, uh, and uh, one line after the other. So, uh, and, and uh, you can uh, imagine what alphabets are uh, uh, making in terms of efforts, uh, because not, o not only you have to guarantee the translations, but also the compatibility of the software with, with, the, with the different fonts, which are uh, uh, shown on the, on, um, on the video uh, with different styles and with different needs, each one. So the, what Dries says is that there is a large number of makers, but there is a, unfortunately a, a larger number of takers. Makers are also companies, companies that invest on open source. Takers are companies that take open source, maybe do a little bit, but really a tiny bit, and uh, take most of the open source code. So basically, at the end, uh, uh, this uh, means that takers can damage makers, and uh, this visual will uh, tell you why. If a company invests 50% of the revenues in improving the software, so it's a good maker of open source, of course it will risk its business model in front of a taker that will invest only 5% of its revenues in, on open source. So these guys will uh, have more opportunities of advertising or investing money in commercial strategies than, uh, than the makers. But on the other side, are the makers are the people that are really making open source. So we have to find a balance. And the LibreOffice project has the same, the same issue. When we launched the project, uh, we wanted to relaunch the, this happened or 13 years ago. In 2010, we wanted to relaunch the innovation. Uh, the, uh, it was open office that was uh, a little bit um, on, on a stalling uh, because of the size of the project on one side, but because also of the issues that Sun, the company behind the project, had at the moment. So we decided to create a foundation a foundation, uh, we created the foundation because there was not another foundation that could serve our objectives. We didn't want to create a foundation for the sake of creating one because it was a lot of work behind it. Uh, we wanted to have a project that, where the community was uh, volunteers and ecosystems. We wanted to have a development that is uh, more or less balanced. These are the last two years. 62% are from uh, the ecosystem companies, uh, around 30% from uh, volunteers, and uh, TDF is increasing. TDF is the Document Foundation, is increasing a little bit the development. If you, if you look at contribution, core developers account for 
75% of all the code. Uh, it is important to have core developers. It is important to keep the number of core developers at the same level. So uh, ecosystem companies are key in this effort. But also some regular developers are uh, members of ecosystem companies or are volunteers that are working on the software almost on a daily basis. So uh, basically 62% of development is paid by ecosystem companies' customers. These are the, I say, the good friends of uh, good enter the enterprises that are good friends of our project uh, and uh, the rest uh, is done uh, by volunteers or by the, the, the team and uh, the problem is uh, uh, this uh, gives you an idea of uh, uh, where focus is uh, uh, enterprise uh, Ecosystem companies are uh, is new features mostly. Um, volunteers are mostly uh, user interface and localization, and uh, TDF developers are mostly doing accessibility, uh, right to left languages, and uh, all feature requests. Features that over ten years have never been developed by anyone. Uh, so today we are uh, uh, in a, in a still in a good position, but uh, the reality is that in the next 10 years we should uh, really increase the number of enterprises that are paying to develop uh, LibreOffice. Uh, the concept uh, that we have developed is that LibreOffice has evolved from a product to technology. Uh, the reality, and this uh, shows you better, the visual, as usual, shows you better uh, the difference between LibreOffice and the other Office suites. So LibreOffice has the same engine independently from uh, uh, desktop, mobile, or uh, cloud. Uh, because the engine uh, has been uh, developed and tweaked to be flexible. All the other Office suite, uh, you can put any name on that. Microsoft Office, only Office, WPS Office, whatever Office, they've all developed uh, one engine for each platform. So the engine of Office on the desktop is not the engine of Office 365 and is not the engine of Office for Android or, uh, or uh, iOS. This means that the, the documents will be different. The documents are actually different, uh, apart from the differences that are, uh, uh, the hidden differences that are uh, added to the XML uh, to increase the locking strategy. But they are different because the engines are different. Uh, so we want to stress in this advantage. We want to increase the number of people that are investing on, uh, on LibreOffice. The current users, as you see uh, in the community, are individuals who donate. And uh, some universities, some enterprises, some government organization that are paying for LibreOffice. In the future, we should uh, we cannot increase the individuals. I mean, we would like to, but of course individuals are already making a lot of effort to, to, to fund LibreOffice. So uh, we, we will accept some as free riders, universities, enterprises. A few of them is part of the game. We don't want to each company to pay 100% of the products. They can pay 60%, 50%, but they have to pay something. So we have to increase, we have to educate. Uh, in the case of the Italian Ministry of Defense, for instance, we managed to have them pay for 40% of the 100,000 desktops they're using LibreOffice on. And that is, is okay. These are, these, these are the 40% of strategic desktops. The other 60% is used once a week. The other one are used once a day. So they have bought 40,000 licenses. This is okay. If all the large corporations that are using LibreOffice would pay 40%, we could really invest probably 
triple the investment on LibreOffice in terms of development. And uh, communicate with others uh, to uh, stress the importance of uh, having them pay some money or paying developers. If they are developers that work on LibreOffice, that's absolutely okay for us. We don't want to get the money. We, we need to have development uh, or localization or quality assurance um, help. And uh, time for question if there is. Otherwise, thank you for listening. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Italo. Um, yeah, are there questions? Yes. Uh, thanks for the very insightful presentation. So you say that you want to increase the organization's pain. Do you have any idea how you're going to do that? Uh, actually, uh, we... we uh, I think that the only chance we have to do is through education, because otherwise, you know, one, one possibility, and this is why I stress this uh, at, um, at first. Uh, sorry. Um, one solution could be have a dual core or an open core product. But that is not open source. So we would like to resist that as much as possible. Uh, because uh, we want to stay loyal to open source. So we, the first idea is educate. If we manage, okay. If we don't manage, there will be some, some organization that have to go uh, open core. There's no other way. I mean, we have a bank in the state that is deploying LibreOffice on 300,000 desktops and is not paying anything. That is, I mean, we, we, we talk with them and we say, oh, we don't have budget now. You don't have budget? Come on, a bank. <laughs> and uh, the, the money that you have saved by deploying LibreOffice instead of Microsoft Office, let's consider 10% of that money. Uh, in, in some cases, uh, it's really difficult to really to, to uh, forgive this, this organization. I can understand universities. Universities, according to the governments, they, have, they may have more or less money. There are universities that have really not that much money, even around Europe, okay. Uh, but for instance, if, if a university starts working uh, in the uh, engineering area on uh, getting students that elaborate their thesis on LibreOffice, that would represent an, an help for LibreOffice because a thesis would either solve some bugs or improve some code, provide something. So we would like to stay really loyal to open source as much as, or as long as possible. Then uh, we'll see. It would be a real pity, I think, for everyone if LibreOffice uh, was uh, stopped, development was stopped because of the economics. That would be a real pity for, I think, for, for me for sure, because I use only LibreOffice, but for many people around uh, would be as well, at least for all Linux users. So, okay. Uh, who was the first? Uh, yeah, thank you for the presentation. Uh, I have one question, one idea. Do you think it could be poss possible, uh, it depends on the relations you have with them, but to go through the companies that are providing uh, LibreOffice to educate the organizations? So to say, okay, we have some companies that are partners of the project of the Document Foundation, and they can, you, can, you could like, sign an agreement and say, okay, they have also to educate the organization and to say, well, 1% of what I'm going to build uh, for this project is going to the Document Foundation, for example. Uh, 
Um, but we are already doing this because uh, we work with the ecosystem companies. Uh, of course, the ecosystem companies have a mixed uh, uh, business plan. Uh, they have to pay their employees first. But usually, they, they uh, by staying loyal to open source, they release with an open source license. So uh, let's say worst case, a feature that is developed by an ecosystem company after six months is on LibreOffice community, which means it's f available for everyone. So we are already working. Uh, the problem, of course, that our resources, human resources are limited. We, don't, we are not thousands of people going around and, uh, and, and explaining this. Uh, uh, and therefore, uh, the community can help us. I mean, if you have a chance of talking to someone and you understand and know uh, that they are using LibreOffice on many desktops, try to tell them at least send an email and say, what can we do together with the, with the project? She's, she's making a terrible sign there. <laughs> no, this is better not. This is OK, but. <laughs> um, just a, just only for clarification, what's the price of LibreOffice? When you talk about, like, uh, they are deploying it uh, on 300,000 desktops, so it's like the free version yes. of it, so you are not putting a price tag no. on it or something? So no. what would you expect from them to pay you? Like, because I think it's very... We, I mean, can't go to every company and say, like, hey, this is the price for you, this is the price for you. So do you have any... No. We, first, uh, as, as foundation, we cannot. Because we are a charity. So we cannot ask a price for anything. And... Uh, Second, uh, this is a question for the ecosystem companies. They have a price for LibreOffice. I can tell you, I'm I not allowed to, of course, to, to make any, any advertising for these companies, but I can tell you that it is uh, around one-tenth of what they would spend, spend for Microsoft Office. The ratio is one order of magnitude less. So you can imagine uh, the difference uh, in terms of invest investment from a company. 